die Schwester Afrikan zu The sacrifice of praise For you alone are holy You alone are worthy Oh, you deserve You deserve the glory
have your seats. Are you excited to be here? Yeah. <clears throat> Just help you with the sound. I don't know what you guys are doing with the sound previously. Survey 2023. That's a bit better up here, thanks. We have a lot of people online right now. I think we have close to 3,000 watching online. And uh, we have our campuses full as well. Um, and we'll be connecting with them a bit closer to 12 to uh, when we get to the prophetic word. And I, we, I just want to welcome those who are on Facebook, on YouTube. Uh, we have people, and we have people on Zoom, we have on, um, we have on uh, our other apps and so on, but we have people from everywhere, from international, from uh, Pakistan, Athens, Greece, Philippines, Michigan, uh, London, United States, Connecticut, Georgia, Virginia, New Jersey, Indonesia, uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Toronto, from Canada, from people all over South Africa, I'm not even going to mention all the places, I mean, it's, it's everywhere in South Africa. Let us know where you're watching from. Let us know also in the comment section how many are watching with you. And uh, I know many families are watching. Uh, people are gathering as families together watching going into the New Year's. And uh, let us know. And then those on YouTube, do us a favor right now. If you can click the thumbs up and the... Um, I don't know what happened to our sound the last few weeks, but it's just not been the same. Um, so uh, let us know, click us a thumbs up button, let us know, like the broadcast, uh, that helps with algorithm, those on Facebook just shared. But anyway, let's get into the message. I want those who are watching online, connect with us in your heart, connect with us in your spirit. Um, you can get this atmosphere that is here in, um, in your house. So, uh, you know, it is so tinny up here. It's like hurting my ears bad. And it's just echoes and stuff, feedback up here. So please help me. And uh, 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 Sophie 2023, it's good to see everybody here. I want us to enter in. I want us to enter into the, into the new year by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It's very difficult for me to preach with the sound as it is. So just bear with me. Um, or is it just my ears that is weird like that or is it the sound it's the sound why can't they fix it I mean it's been now weeks listen to that so I just hear feedback the whole time up here but go with me to Joshua chapter number uh, 3 verse 5 Joshua chapter number 3 verse 5 and uh I have a bit of a word, but I'm just going to be jumping all over. I want to get into prophetic declarations. I want your spirit to be open. Many people have come from far. Many have driven from far. Many have flown in. And uh, uh, so I want purely, I want this evening to be dedicated to the word of the Lord, to what God is saying. Uh, Joshua chapter number three, verse five. Listen to this. And Joshua said to the people, sanctify yourselves. Put on the King James Version. The King James Version. Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow. Say with me tomorrow. The Lord will do wonders among you. Now, now go with me to Psalm 71 verse 7. Psalm 71 verse 7. King David is saying, I am as a wonder unto many. But thou art my strong refuge. You see, it, King David is saying, he says, Lord, you have made me a wonder to others. And I heard the Lord whispering to me that tomorrow I will do wonders. Are, are you guys with me? Can I change the mics or just see if there's something that is better? Uh, just to test it, I'm not sure. So that I can preach. Test. No, this thing is, I don't think. Test, test. 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 It's between these two. Let me just see because it's different to you out there than what it is here for me. Test. Test. Anyway, is this one better? Or this one? Uh, this one. Huh? This one. And it's interrupting a international service. But it is fine. This, uh, I think we, I don't know if we need to buy new speakers, but these things, but these are new ones or not. 
but these things are uh, maybe they're not but uh, it is just bad quality and we've been complaining and complaining unless if it is the whole sound setup Joshua 3 verse 5 for why it is difficult because I need sound to be right for me to preach I need to be able to hear the sound going forth otherwise I'm standing talking and it just feels like I'm in my own bubble I will do wonders with you tomorrow say with me tomorrow God will do wonders are you guys with me say wonders say a sign and a wonder say I will become a sign and a wonder in Jesus name and I'm just trying to get into a flow by this thing go to Ephesians 2 verse 6 Ephesians 2 verse 6 Listen to this. Uh, put in the New King James for you with this one. And He has raised us up together. Go one verse back. I'm just giving you what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to me as we're going one verse back more. Let me just see where to start. But God who is rich in mercy because of His great love which He loved us even when we were dead in trespasses made us alive together with Christ. So if He made us alive with Christ, meaning you were dead in your trespass, He made us together alive with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Next verse. And raised us up. So if He raised us up. Together. And made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Go one verse back. Put in the King James Version for me. I'm looking for something here to see as uh, uh, one verse back. Let me just see something with the King James Version. Even when we were dead in sins, He has quickened. So if He quickened, which means, this is what I heard this with the Lord saying to me, is that there's an anointing that is going to come. Now we're going to prophesy a, uh, a little bit later, closer to 12, I'll give the main prophecy. But throughout the service, I'm going to drop things. The Lord said to me, there's an anointing where He's going to rejuvenate His people, quicken their spirits and their bodies. Because of 2020, 2021, 2022, there has been this depression and this uh, uh, sullenness upon people where they were discouraged, where they were in debt. But I saw the Spirit of the Lord bringing a quickening and raising the church up. So if He raised up. And the Lord said to me, I will enthrone my people. Go, go next verse. Quicken together with Christ. Next verse. And has raised us up, enthroned us with Christ, and made us sit together. So if we sit together. Meaning He made us sit on a throne together with Christ. The Lord said to me that His church, even in South Africa, has been slandered, has been accused, and has been made to be a beggar. Now listen to this. Where the church has lost her clothes, where the church has lost her adornment, where the church has lost the ability for people to be proud of her, I heard the Lord saying, I will clothe her in rich clothes. When the Bible says that Jesus was laid to rest, just when they took Him off the cross, that there was a man by the name of Joseph of Arimathea, a rich business person um, related to Jesus, according to Scripture, that the Bible says these words, it says He craved after the body of Christ. He had a craving in his spirit after the body of Christ. To want to see the body of Christ clothed in rich garments. Are you guys with me? If you can find the scripture, you can put it up. But it says he craved after the body. There it is, Joseph of Arimathea an honorable counselor, which also wanted for the kingdom of God came 
who also waited for the kingdom of God came and went in boldly unto Pilate and craved the body of Jesus. Next verse. And Pilate marveled if he were already dead and calling unto him the centurion, he asked him whether he had been any while dead. And when he knew it of the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. And Joseph bought fine linen, so the fine linen. Now the translation will say rich linen. And took him down and wrapped him in the linen and laid him in a sepulcher which was hewn out of the rock and rolled a stone on the door of their sepulcher. Meaning the Lord said to me that the body of Christ has been naked, embarrassed and ashamed in the nation of South Africa specifically. I know there are those who are watching from other nations and we're going to get into the Word and prophecy for other nations. And I know the numbers are climbing right now. But the Lord said to me this, when it comes to the nation of South Africa, I will make people proud of the church again. That the spirit of poverty is going to be dealt with. That the spirit of lack that has made people to look at the church and be embarrassed or be ashamed or treated the church like a beggar on the streets. The Lord said to me, I will dress it in the fine clothing. For I will cause the wealth of the wicked to come in and there'll be a transfer of wealth. But listen, so with the fine clothing. For when people will look at the church from the outside in, they will see something that is beautiful again. But this is what the Lord said to me. I will make you a wonder that when people look at the church or when people look at believers in the church, they will see a sign and they will see a wonder. I will make you a wonder to your enemies. I will make you a wonder to those that disregarded you, to those who look down upon you. For they shall look, the Lord is saying, can I not, if I, can I not save a nation in one day? What can I do with your life? If I can save, can I not save? The Lord is saying, can I not save again a nation? not be saved in one day. You will see that within a matter of this year, there'll be a change where they will look and say, but there's no way that you could have come out of this situation. Say with the fine linen. Say rich linen. Have your seats, have your seats. Hmm. Hmm. Let me see if I can, uh, if I walk down there, if it will be better with the sound. So, the. Hmm. And once I'm going to get to releasing prophecy, I'm going to kind of like read off so that I can give it word for word exactly how I, uh, how I had it. Say with me, I will become a wonder. <laughs> go with me to, go with me to, 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 um, Go with me to this verse on you. Go with me to Psalm. First go with me to Psalm 97 verse 5. Psalm 97 verse 5. When I looked, the Holy Spirit said to me, I will take oil of the anointing and I will cause as I will clothe my church with rich linen you will see that I will put oil upon the ground that pe my people will walk upon 
and I will put it upon their heads. And the Lord said to me this. He said, I will anoint their heads afresh with fresh oil. That promotion will come from me. But that the eye that used to look upon them with an eye of persecution or disdain is going to look upon them with fear, says the Lord. Because it is the anointing that destroys the yoke. It is the oil that breaks the yoke. But the Lord said to me, your head shall lack no oil. Your horn shall lack no strength. And I'm giving positive words right now before we get into the negative. So within my head shall lack no oil. So they say, I receive the oil upon my head in Jesus' name. Have your seats, have your seats. Why do we, why do we name a year? Why do we name a year? Let me, let me uh, give you something here. A lot of people ask us, why do we do this? Why do we think? We go to Psalm chapter number 65, verse 11. Before I get into the verse that I was on the screen. Psalm 65, verse 11. You crown the year with your goodness. Uh, if, you trans, if, you, if you transcribe this or, or, or uh, interpret this, it would say in another translation, it would say, you name the year with your goodness. You establish the year. Meaning that as we go into the new year, now listen, it is not just a normal day tomorrow. Genesis 1 verse 14 says, the moon and the stars and the sun, I will give to you as signs and seasons and days and years. That when you look at the stars in heaven or the things shifting, it is there as a season. Are you guys with me? There's a season that has shifted in the earth this year of 2022 where we have changed from an industrial age to an artificial intelligence age. It happened this year. In all the things, you'll see manuals beginning to change. You'll see school manuals beginning to change because of this third industrial revolution that has changed to the fourth industrial revolution. But there's a change of a whole era and an epoch that has taken place. And if the church again makes a mistake by not embracing things, the church will be left behind again 10 years, 15 years. Are, are you guys with me? People are screaming and saying, uh, you know, I have a very funny feeling about this AI. And the, people said it about the television they're watching us on right now. They said it is the mark of the beast or the computer they're watching us on right now. You are in this world, but you are not of this world. Say with me authority. Say power. Say the anointing. The Lord said, My and their heads will lack no oil. And by my power and my authority, for I have given them, listen, the Bible says that I've given them the right to become sons of God, children of God. I've given them power to become children of God. There is an authority that is given to you as you go into this new year. I don't, I am not here to just preach a teaching message. You get that every Sunday. Is that okay? I'm here to speak by the Spirit of God and give decrees or declarations. To speak under a prophetic unction. That is why sound is pivotal for me. 
Because if it is not there, it, 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 it affects the gift tremendously. Because in my ears, under this sound stuff, I hear whistlings, just whistlings like a, uh, 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 that is how it sounds for me. That's why it is difficult to get it out. But under a prof to go into the new year, under a prophetic unction, you see, you cannot cross over without a prophet. The early church was led by apostles and prophets. The modern day church is led by pastors and leaders and administrators. And we wonder why the church lacks power. There's a grace that God has given to apostles and prophets to lead the church properly. Do you know how many churches don't have New Year's Eve services? I saw some churches having it in the morning and I'm thinking, so some people say to me, no, but you know, the people don't come though. Your oil, your head lacks oil. People say they don't have Christmas services because people won't come this Christmas, this year Christmas. I'm thinking, people flock to where there's oil or where there's an anointing. If I speak tonight, I must, it is pivotal for me to speak under a prophetic unction or under a prophetic oil so that things can shift. The Bible says you crown the year with your goodness, meaning that God speaks forth as we step into a new year. Commanding your morning, commanding your year. The Bible says, command ye the works of my hands. That God has put something in your mouth, that your mouth has become an instrument or an organ to change and shift spiritual things. That you have the ability to name your year, to set your year. Are you guys with me? And the Lord says, I crown this year with what? Goodness. Have you, have you seen? Are you guys with me? Go with me. Go with me. So, so go through to Genesis 45 verse 5. Let me start uh, a little bit here. But this is what the Lord said with me as I was praying. And I prayed long for this year. He said to me, it's going to be a year of tears for many. He said, it's going to be a year of tears for many. It's going to be a year of pain for many. But there's a way that He has made for His people. Now listen, you will see tears flowing from the faces, on the faces of many this year and the years to come. It is not going to get easier. I understand many churches or many people are saying it's the year of breakthrough. It is the year of this. It is the year of that. And uh, many times they do it for their congregation and what their congregation is entering into. God has not only called me for this congregation. We have, um, I think, almost 400 people right down Cape Town. We got uh, Kruger's door full. We got this full. We have close to 3,000 people online. Um, so, so, you know, and that is just who is watching right now. You cannot cross into a new year without a prophetic anointing. It is the prophets that have the ability to see. The Bible says, believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe in His prophets and you shall prosper. Meaning, my prosperity is locked up in the location where a prophet is or where a prophetic people is. Are you guys with me? So, so have you seen, go to Genesis 45, we're on Genesis 45, listen to this. So the Lord said to me, it'll be a year of tears for many. It'll be a year of pain. But I have crowned this year with goodness and I've made a way for my people where they can be protected 
Listen to this. But now, so let, 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 me, let me just give the context of this story. This is Joseph who went through, who went through um, all the things he's went through from the pit to the prison, being lifted to Potiphar's house, then being lifted next to Pharaoh. And at the end, close to the end of his life, at the end of the story of what we know of him, we see uh, in Genesis 45 verse 5 where his brothers come before him. Now, I want you to, to take a note that Joseph has a prophetic anointing upon his life. Now it says this. It says, but now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. Just keep it for me on that one. Do not be grieved or angry. Are you guys with me? I am battling with the sun, but I will just be humble and patient. Do not be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. Let's go to verse 7. And God sent me before you to preserve a posterity with you in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you who sent me, but God. And He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. The Lord said to me, I will make my people in a place of bondage. I will make them rulers. I'll make them lords. Are you guys with me? Fix the sound guys, please. I mean, in goodness sake, have you have you thanks. I'm just speaking to them. It feels like I'm speaking into a wall. It really does. The moment I try to pick preach, it's just like, Kung. so somebody is playing, I don't know, something is not right. Joseph is saying, and this is, keeps bothering me because I want to prophesy over individuals, but my spirit is so grieved by something or someone. Joseph is saying, you have... Do not be, he said to his brothers, listen, you're standing in front of me. You're feeling ashamed. Do not be angry or be grieved. Because God has sent me before you to preserve, say with you, preserve. Which means prophets have a God quality in them to preserve that God uses prophets in a nation like salt to preserve he will distribute a prophetic anointing or distribute prophets in regions and in places to preserve them or to preserve a region are you guys with me now I'm going to speak about a system when it comes to the prophetic the prophetic has the ability to bring somebody out of the motions of just going through Christianity. What I mean, mean the motions. You know when we worship and sometimes we'll have people from other churches and it's fine and they'll just be like, they, they, they can't connect with God. And I'm not saying because they're from another church. Maybe uh, I'm just saying they're New Year. So uh, let's say it is a Christian. Maybe they've served God for their whole lives. Some of them will raise their hands and outwardly it's going through the motions, but the heart is not connecting. Are you guys with me? So it is like the prophet Isaiah who said, where the Lord says, their lips speaks of me, but their hearts are far away from me. They praise me and worship me through their lips 
but their hearts are far away from me. So the prophetic anointing will have the ability to cause somebody's pretentious or masks to come off and let them experience God. It is by only by the prophetic. Listen. And the Lord said to me, with this year you'll see how there'll begin to be an establishing, especially in the nation of South Africa, when it comes to the needs of not only the threefold ministry, but the fivefold ministry. For many churches believed in a threefold ministry, pastor, teacher, and evangelist. And they do not want to accept the apostle and prophet. Are you guys with me? That I have to battle so much in my own church. May Jesus have mercy on me. And you're not you responding. You respond very well. Are you guys with me? It is the sound that is not responding. And uh, so listen. He said to Joseph. But Joseph said to his brothers, look. God has sent me before you to preserve you. To preserve a posterity. Meaning this. That God has kept me to preserve you. God has sent me before you to preserve you to posterity. The word posterity means progenitator. It means where your genes can carry on flowing. Where your DNA can carry on flourishing. Are you guys with me? And God would take prophetic anointings and He would take centers that is going to begin to raise. When I mean centers, we think of the church as a fellowship only. Yet, it is a place where DNA can be multiplied. Or there's a place where there should be a tribe. Meaning that if I stand here in encounter, there should be a tribe that should be available. Or there should be a tribe in the atmosphere. There should be a DNA that is cultivated in the atmosphere. Are you guys with me? There should be DNA that is cultivated. Meaning that if somebody comes in here, they have a certain experience. They have a certain encounter. They know that the preaching is going to be a certain way. They know the worship is going to be a certain way. They know the prophetic anointing can flow a certain way. It is a tribe and a DNA that is established. It is a posterity that is established. Meaning God will use prophets to keep a flow of a certain DNA. Are you guys with me? So there is a famine on the rise with the story of Joseph. And Joseph is seeing that the famine is, the famine at this time has already been there two years. And uh, 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 he says to his brothers, he says, look, God has sent me before you to preserve you to posterity. There is an anointing I want to, uh, well, before I get onto that, let me still go on to the word preserve. The root Hebraic meaning of preserve comes from the word stomach, which means to preserve somebody, means to give them nutrition that their stomach can be full. Now the stomach is the center of life in the natural. In the spiritual, it is the center of life. The Bible says, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Are you guys with me? So the stomach center has, is a spiritual womb with where you're preserved, with how you're being preserved in this life, the natural life, or you're being preserved in the spiritual life. Are you full of the Spirit? In the natural life, are you full of food? But the fact that Joseph said, God has sent me before you to preserve you unto posterity. 
meaning that God has sent me before you to make sure that food is kept in your stomach, that there's no famine. Are you guys with me? So Joseph knew a famine was coming. Here it was already two years in. He said to Pharaoh, he said, listen here, this is what we need to do as Egypt to save and this. And God sent a prophet. The Bible says that Joseph became a father to Pharaoh. That when Pharaoh looked at him, he saw a spiritual father. Are you guys with me? So there are levels of the anointing and there's something that God wants me to release tonight. You have anointings of healing or you have anointings of prophecy or you have anointings of uh, deliverance or you have the anointing of, uh, of uh, prosperity. But then there's anointing level which we call Goshen. Say with me Goshen. Go for you to Genesis 45 verse 10. Have you seen? Have you seen? So, what is Goshen? And I want to hurry up. I want to do this in 15 minutes. Then I want to uh, get into just one or two things, and then we're going to get into prophecy. And I have a lot of things to share when it comes to prophecy. What is Goshen? The Bible says in Genesis 45 verse 10. Listen to this: You shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near to me. Say with me, dwell. I want you to remember that. Dwell in the land of Goshen and you shall be near to me. So he says, number one, you will dwell there. Where else do we see the word dwell? The Bible says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. As the secret place is a spiritual location. So Goshen is a spiritual location. Because while you are working, you need to dwell in Goshen. While you are on holiday, you dwell in Goshen. But a Goshen is given in the time of a famine. Are you guys with me? But there's much, much more to a Goshen. Listen to this. The word Goshen, have you seen? The word Goshen means this. It is a land of preservation. It is a land of plenty. So with the plenty. It is a land of multiplication. So with the plenty. When Goshen was mentioned, it was like speaking prosperity. The devil keeps Christians poor by making their mouth speak poverty or making their mouth speak against prosperity. We all complain about money and about the way the country goes. And then a Christian is saying, you know, God is prospering me. God is blessing me. And we're like, you're full of pride and arrogance. And our own mouth curses our own lives. When can the mind of the body of Christ begin to change? to embrace prosperity, to embrace the blessing of God to the place where, or to the degree where it is plenty that is given to you, that you understand, but the will of God, I almost call this year the year of plenty. I still did, but different. I almost called it the year of plenty. And I almost called it the year of prosperity. Are you guys with me? But I have to call what God says, but I almost called it the year of prosperity. And I thought, how many will hate it? I mean, imagine who in their right, it is only a demon that will tell you. You see, we want prosperity for ourselves, just not for someone else. So that is why we keep bashing prosperity because it's always happening to somebody else. But I promise you, any person that's against prosperity, let money be given to them. I watch the people that usually attack us on the internet or do all this stuff. They have zilts in their life. Zero. Complaining. I don't have money to pay my rent. I don't know. You are too blind 
to know you will keep coming against the anointed. I'm speaking of every single one, eh? It's amazing those with wealth will not attack. They learned one thing, that their mouth is an organ of their blessings or their curses. Are you guys with me? So what is Goshen? Say with me, it is a spiritual location. It is a secret place. Listen, how do I get into it? I want to do this quick just for the sake of time. Because we want to uh, minister the Word of the Lord. How do I step into Goshen? And we can read through the whole story in Scripture. I'm going to touch on a few things. But how do I get into Goshen? So please understand this. Joseph said to his brothers, I have a land called Goshen for you. Go and get your father. Go tell him, I am here, I am alive, and I'm just paraphrasing. And he said, I have a place, Goshen. Pharaoh said to Joseph, listen, take the land Goshen, which Joseph asked Pharaoh for, if you go read the whole story. And he says, put your, it's the land, it's the best of the best. Are you guys with me? How do I get into Goshen? Genesis 45 verse 5, go back to 45 verse 5. How do I step into my Goshen? But now, do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves. Say with me, do not be grieved and do not be angry. So the first thing on how I step into my Goshen is by changing and dealing with my heart. Listen, this year is going to be a year of testing for many. Are you guys with me? I know when I test people and I know when God tests people. And I have the ability, I am allowed, qualified by God to test those around me, whether they believe it or not. Um, and I would see when I would put somebody through a test. Maybe I ignore them for a year. Maybe I speak contrary to what they want but it is there for them to deal with their heart. You see, when God puts you around a prophet, you would usually, if your heart is evil, you'll begin to judge out of the evil imaginations or the evil lusts of your heart. You'll begin to judge and say, but if he's a prophet, if he's called of God, he will not treat me like that. He would take my phone call or he would respond. I don't respond to messages. People get so upset. I, I just don't respond to messages. And, uh, and sometimes somebody would send me a message expecting a reply and I'm like, ah, I'm going to reply in three days. Or, uh, and I can feel their heart boiling. And it is your heart that can keep you from entering into your destiny. So Joseph said to his brothers, I need you first to deal with your heart before you can get into Goshen. It has been scientifically proven, I think now only in 2018, with the latest research that came out, that they realized that your heart is the second mind of your body. And it contains an actual amount of, I don't know how many thousands of neurons in the heart. Meaning that the heart has the ability to think. Are you guys with me? You can go Google it. It's new research that came up. They, say, they call it micro neurons or something like that. That is in the heart, meaning that the heart has neurons that sparks, that thoughts are in the heart. So they realize the thoughts are, there are some thoughts that originate from the heart and there are some thoughts that originate from the mind or from your brain. So I will go as far as to say this, that your brain is the brain of your body, but your heart is the mind of your spirit. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, not in his mind, in his heart. I don't know if you guys are with me. All they could have, they waited all these years to study science. All they could do is read the Bible. And the Bible says you think in your heart. So how do you touch God? By th there's a way you think in your mind and there's a way you think in your heart. 
Are you guys with me? Have, have your seats. What is imagination? People think imagination is natural. 2 Corinthians chapter number 10, you don't have to go there. I think it is verse 4 or 5. Which says, it says this. We do not walk in the flesh. What does it say? Although we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Are you guys with me? Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war against the flesh. Say with me, we do not war according to the flesh. So we war according to the Spirit. That's what the Scripture is saying. Then it goes on. It says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. For pulling down strongholds. Put in the King James Version. Say with me, pulling down strongholds. Casting down imaginations. Now hold on. If it says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, it's not fleshly, but it is spiritual. And these weapons pulls down imaginations. That tells you that imagination is spiritual. That everything that you can see in your imagination is an access into the realm of the Spirit. 2023 will be a year for those who has the ability to imagine. I don't know if you guys are with me. The sound, the sound. Have your seats, have your seats. Say with me, imagination. I'm going to stop preaching here over this sound like this, I'm telling you. Uh, so what is Goshen? So, 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 so how to get into Goshen? I deal with my heart. Say with me, my heart. So I imagine not in my mind. You imagine in your heart. Think of it like this. You think in your mind. You rationalize in your mind. But there's something that scientists cannot really fully comprehend. And that is on how to, how an imagination works. Because the moment you imagine, it moves from your mind to your heart. Where the Bible says that Jesus could hear the thoughts of their hearts. So you can think in your heart or you can think in your mind. It is the heart that has the ability to penetrate the realm of the Spirit. Are you guys with me? So how do I get into Goshen? Say with it, deal with my heart. And number two. So I must deal with, number one, deal with my heart. I must deal with offense this year. There's a place of Goshen that God has for us. You see, there are many people here. There are many people online. But there are many people that are not here. And you know what is disheartening for me? is when a Christian is a Christian and uh, they are not in church on a New Year's service. I mean, still miss it on Christmas, you know, I don't know, it's like people, but a New Year? For me, I've just, I have never missed it since the day of my salvation, never. There's never a thing where I would bry with family, never. Why? He crowns the year with His goodness. There are many Christians and the church, the Lord said to me, I am weeping for the church in South Africa. And I'm weeping over the nation of South Africa because the church has become so lukewarm. Very lukewarm. That prophets are grieved. They battle to prophesy because of the familiarity that there is. But Timothy, deal with your heart. Number two, how do I get into Goshen? Say with the prophetic sight. Listen to this, prophetic sight. Genesis 46 verse 4. Genesis 46 verse 4. Now listen to this. I will go down with thee into Egypt. And I will also, so the Lord is speaking to Isaac now. Oh, sorry, to, 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 to not to Joseph, Joseph's father, Isaac. Um, sorry. Yeah, uh, Jacob, Jacob, sorry. The Lord is speaking to Jacob, saying that, uh, listen to this. So, the, so, so we see here that, um, go, with me to, go with me to verse, let me explain it in the context. Go with me to verse, 
verse, one verse back. So here we see Joseph's father is inquiring of the Lord to say that, should I go down to Egypt to meet Joseph? And the Lord answered him. And he said, I am God, the God of thy father. Fear not to go down into Egypt. For I will, I will there make of thee a great nation. Next verse. Now listen to this. I will go down with thee into Egypt and I will also surely bring you up again. And Joseph shall put his hand upon your eyes. Are you guys with me? And you will nowhere again see a reference of this going further. But it says, Joseph, he said, Joseph will touch your eyes. Why? Elisha was praying for his servant. And he said, Lord, I pray that you open his eyes. That he may see. And the Lord opened Elisha's servant's eyes. And he saw the armies of the Lord surrounding them. Before his eyes was open, all he saw was calamity. The moment his eyes was open, he saw into another reality. And he says, Joseph will put his hand on your eyes. Because the moment he touches your eyes, you will be able to see the land that I have for you. Which is a spiritual location. Go say nobody else saw it. It was kept for no one else. Are you guys with me? Why? It is a location that is hidden away. That people can walk past without knowing even it is there. Now listen. So I must have spiritual perception. So with the prophetic sight. The Bible says, put anoint your eyes with eyes off. Number three. Listen, listen, listen. Number three. How do I get into Goshen? Genesis 46 verse 28. Go 46 verse 28. Uh, Genesis 46 verse 28. And he sent Judah before him unto Joseph to direct his face unto Goshen. And they came into the land of Goshen. Are you guys with me? We see that Jacob sent Judah before him, which was obviously called Israel now. Jacob is Israel, but sent Judah before him. Isn't it amazing that he could have chosen any of his sons, could have chosen Benjamin, could have chosen Levi, could have chosen this one, but he chose Judah to go before him. Meaning that the way I get into my Goshen is by praise and worship, praise and thanksgiving. Are you guys with me? Jehoshaphat, the Bible speaks in 2 Chronicles 20, when Jehoshaphat was when the king uh, was in a war and it says, the, and Joseph had was fighting this battle and the Spirit of the Lord came upon somebody there to begin to prophesy. Jebusiel, someone like that, prophesied and said, believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. And he says, believe in your his prophets and you shall prosper. Are you guys with me? Let me read it. In fact, let me go to Chronicles chapter number 20, verse 15. 2 Chronicles 20, verse 15. Go through that. I want to speak to you about the importance of praise and thanksgiving. Just while we add it. And he said, Hear can ye, all Judah, all Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and the king Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord, Be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. O Judah, say with me, Judah, meaning, O praise, and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. 
tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Joseph had, st- verse 20, Joseph had stood and said, Hear me, O Judah. He said, Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe in His prophets, and you shall prosper. And we saw, and it goes on, I'm not going to carry on, but it says, When they began to praise, that confusion came upon the camp of the enemy until they began to devour and destroy one another. Are you guys with me? Say with me, number one. Say, dealing with my heart. Say, number two. Prophetic sights. Number three, say praise. Say thanksgiving. Number four, let me go on. How do I get into my, my Goshen? Say with me, believing prophets. Joseph had said, believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe in His prophets and you shall prosper. <laughs> I, want you, I want you to see this. Let's go back to 2 Chronicles chapter number 20. I think we read from verse 15. Go verse 14. Listen to this. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mer- a Levite of the sons of Asbeth. Next verse. And he said, so the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel and he said, we see how he goes on. He says, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. The battle is not yours. Jehaziel prophesied and he said, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel. As a prophet, he began to prophesy. The battle is not yours. You will not need to fight in this battle. They believed in the prophets. Jehoshaphat said, believe in the Lord your God but believe what the prophets are saying. And the moment you believe what the prophets are saying, you will win this battle. Are you guys with me? The enemy will do everything to destroy your association or a connection with a prophet. The enemy will whisper into your ears and say they are into divination. Or the enemy will whisper into your ears and say it's a false prophet. Because the devil knows the importance of God's prophets. I will tell you now, show me a person in ministry used by God who has not been prophesied over their calling. Show me a person that is standing in an office being used by God whose calling was not prophesied to them before they got there. You will not find one. Show me a business person in ministry who is filled with the Spirit, I mean, serving God passionately, and they are a kingdom financier, an actual kingdom financier. They're not just somebody who's not, you know, business people, they don't even tithe, but they call themselves kingdom financiers. And you're thinking, but tithing is the reasonable service. That is what every other believer is doing. If you're a kingdom financier, it should be beyond that. But anyway, people just call themselves kingdom financiers. They have no idea what it is. King, I'm a kingdom financier. Whatever. You can't even finance your, your own stuff. You can't even finance your own family. You don't, give what the, you don't even give to the Lord what belongs to the Lord. But you're a kingdom financier. South Africa's mind needs to change. Dear God. There are ministers who outgive kingdom, financier, kingdom financiers. But show me somebody that is used in business that gives into the kingdom a lot. That has not received a prophecy to activate it. You will not find one. Not one. You can go to Hobby Lobby in America who is tithing 90% of their income. And huge Christian office in the United States. And uh, they will tell you 
how their business was prophesied to them when they were you will not find one person in their calling that has not been prophesied even Jesus before he stepped into his call he stood in a queue of a ministry called John the Baptist and when he came walking John pointed his finger to him and said behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of this world I don't know if you guys are with me you cannot enter into your calling if you're in a church that's just ran by a pastor without a prophetic unction where they can prophesy to you how you step into a place or what is God has God's plans is for you are you guys with me I know people will hate this so much ministers will hate this so much what I'm saying right now but listen just quickly I have, I have like two, three minutes what does Goshen what will Goshen do for you what will Goshen do for you number one say protection Say again, say protection. The Bible says in Exodus 9.25, I'm not going to read it, but it says that hail began to fall and struck throughout the land of Egypt, except when it came to the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were. There was no hail. Which means there's a place you can be in the Spirit where no storm can touch you. There's a place where you can walk, where no lion will come upon your path. The book of Job says, I don't know if you guys are with me. No hail storm will touch you. It will destroy the property of everything around you. But when it comes to the land of Goshen, the spiritual location. Mm, are you guys with me? When it comes to the spiritual location. It will not say it will not touch me say with me say the storms of 2023 will not touch me I am in Goshen have you have your seats have your seats listen revelation which is knowledge has the ability to tap into manifestation for example you cannot be in Goshen without knowing there's a place like Goshen. You cannot be in a secret place without having the knowledge that there is a place called the secret place. By having this knowledge, the Bible says that the leaders of the day in, with, when Jesus was speaking, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, that they he said, you have kept the key of knowledge from the people you have not allowed them to enter and you yourselves have not entered so what does it tell you knowledge will give you the ability to enter what is hail say with me hail it means hardship there's things that I'm going to release in the prophecy when we're getting closer that I'll share more. Say it means trouble. So the trouble, problems. It means extreme difficulty. When people are saying it feels like I'm going through a storm, it means hail is hitting you. Are you guys with me? So with the preservation. So it is a place of protection. It is a place of preservation. Meaning in Goshen, your calling is preserved. In Goshen. Your finances is preserved. Your business is preserved. When inflation or recession hits others, you are preserved. It is a spiritual habitation. Your health is preserved. Are you guys with me? Number two, what is the Goshen? What is the place or what, will, what does the Goshen do for you? Say with me, it's a place of promotion. That promotion neither comes from the east nor the west. But the Bible says it comes from neither the east nor the west nor the south. It comes from the north. It comes from the Lord. There's a, a place, a habitation. When the Bible says he who dwells in the secret place of the 
most high. So there's a place that is high up called your spiritual Goshen. That once you dwell there, it is the place where promotion comes to you. Are you guys with me? Number three, what does Goshen do? Say with him multiplication. Say provision and say prosperity. It is a place where you will prosper. Pharaoh said these words to Joseph. He said, go to the land of Goshen to your family and just say anybody that is there that is over cattle, anybody that is herding cattle, let them be the ruler over cattle. I want you to understand this. Pharaoh said, just go to Goshen and anyone that is working with cattle, just make them the ruler. In Goshen, you don't have to put out a CV or a request. If you understand the spiritual location, it is a job that will find you. It is a promise that will find you. They'll say, even if you are just there, you will become the ruler of that trade. Are you guys with me? Say with me, Goshen. Say it again. Say Goshen. Stand to your feet for me. Stand to your feet wherever you are. Hmm. The Lord gave me a promise when it comes to, when it comes to something with your finances. And I want you, as you're standing right now all over, I want us to get ready to give. Before we get ready to give, we want to bless people. Do we have all this, all this stuff? How many is there? Okay. We're going to do it like this. For the sake of time. We, have, we gave last week, we gave the week before that in our other camp in Krugersdorp. We gave last week here and in Krugersdorp, I think. And uh, uh, we're giving tonight again. And we do this during a season, but while people are going to come forward and give, we're going to give, I'm going to ask those also to come forward who cannot or do not have food, who needs sustenance, and we're going to bless you with that while people are coming forward to give. But as you are standing, I want you to get your seed ready for this year. I'm not going to give you a message to hype you up. Go with me just to Joel chapter number 2, verse 24. Joel chapter number 2, verse 24. Those online, I want you to get your offering, your seed, your tithe ready right now. I want you to get your best seed for this year ready. You know, the way I exit is the way I enter. The way... I go into this year, sets the barometer, barometer for my, for, or barometer for my, uh, 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 for where I'm heading. It sets the temperature for where I'm heading into this year. Joel, this is the word of the Lord that, that came to me when it comes to giving. Joel chapter number two, verse 24. Listen to this. The threshing floors shall be full of wheat. I want you to say the same, my threshing floors shall be full of wheat and my vats shall overflow with new wine and oil. Next verse, listen to this. So I will, the Lord is saying, so I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locusts, and the chewing locusts, my great army which I sent among you, you shall eat in plenty. Say with me, I shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And he said, you shall praise the name of the Lord your God who has dwelt, who has dealt wondrously with you. He said, you shall eat in plenty. And then it says, and my people shall never be put to say shame. I heard the Lord saying to me that that which the enemy has stolen in terms of years, I shall restore back to you. But there will be a reaping of years that has been lost, which means things are going to speed up. And I prophesy right now, that everything that you have given this year in combination, everything that you're giving right now will cause the anointing of speed to come into your life. 
will cause the anointing of acceleration to flood your life. Father, I pray right now that the anointing for finances and prosperity will rest upon them. That the curse of lack will be broken upon their lives. Let this seed, let this offering speak for them. Let it be a photograph of their faith. Let it speak as a faith seed for what we are going into. Let it be something that will cause their Goshen to come upon their lives, upon their families. That everything, every sin given into this ministry, you told me, is anointed and will reciprocate back to your people. I decree and declare right now that those who are making a promise, who are making a pledge, those who are saying, I'm giving this amount, may your hand rest upon them tonight. May you come upon them tonight. May you cause wonders to be worked in their lives. May wonders be done in their lives tomorrow. May you cause them to become a sign and a wonder. In Jesus' mighty name. May the glory of the Lord come upon them. May the glory of the Lord rush upon their lives. May the Spirit of the Lord rush upon their lives. In Jesus' name, may the wind of God begin to blow upon them. I prophesy, I decree and declare that a shift and a change will come upon their finances. A shift in their financial status. I prophesy them into a higher dimension. I pray that there will be a shaking in their lives with physical things that will push them into a higher level. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the oil of prosperity rest upon their heads. Let the people of encounter not go and they let their heads lack no oil. Let them not enter this year without the promise of prosperity. Keep them in Goshen. Those who are watching online right now, may the oil of breakthrough, the oil of favor, the oil of prosperity rest upon their lives. May they prosper in all they do. In Jesus' mighty name, those who are giving online right now, through all the different means, may you touch them through the airwaves. May needs be answered. May the touch of the prophetic anointing, may the prophets touch to open their eyes come upon them. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. If you're ready to give right now, church, I want you to, you can come forward and give. You can give via online banking. If those that are here that are saying, I want you to keep standing unless you are uh, working on to get money or so. I want you just to keep standing for me here, please. Everybody just, I want you to keep standing. Everybody in the church, just keep standing for me in this moment. For those who are here that are saying, I need breakthrough in my life in terms of, I must be of anybody that needs breakthrough. I'm saying those who don't have anything to eat during this time of festivities, during this time of Christmas, New Year's. And I know there are people here, those who are saying, I've got children to feed. I don't have the, the, the means to feed them. Uh, those who are saying, I'm going home. I don't have food at home. I'm not speaking of those who maybe got some bills to pay. And I'm, I'm speaking of those who genuinely, you are struggling. And the Lord told us very specifically to pray for you and to give you something before this evening is over. And we did it last week. We did it the week before that. It is a seed for me 
and for this church that I feel that we're sowing into people, it doesn't matter to me the amount. It really doesn't matter the amount. Jesus had the ability to feed 15,000 people in one meeting. Are you guys with me? Not supernaturally, yes, he multiplied the fish, but before that his disciples said to him, let us go to the market and buy food for 15,000 people. And then people want to say Jesus was poor. Are you guys with me? Can you hear me out there? If you are saying, I don't have the means to sustain myself, it is not, we are not here to embarrass you, we are not here to shame you. But you're saying, I need finances right now, I don't have for my family, for my children, I can't eat, I, and you, we want to help you here. I want you to raise your hands for me just so that I can see you of the place. Thank you, I see those hands. I see that. I see that, I see that, I see that. Those who raise their hands, come to the front for me here that I can uh, see you one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, come on, church, let's just give them a hand. Uh, it is not easy to come out like this. And the guys can get ready. We're going to switch over like in four minutes, five minutes. Are they ready? Just give me the... So, church, I want you to stretch out your hands towards them, those that are here. Just come stand here. Now is the opportunity. Don't come afterwards and say, oh, Prophet, I, I was ashamed to come forward. So, this is not just me, or this is not just the church helping you. I want to say this very clear. This is us sowing a seed into your lives that God will do something significant and that I prophesy that it will change and shift things for you. So in here is vouchers, eh? Okay. Is this what, what food vouchers or... Okay, check his vouchers. So, one, three, one, six, eleven here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So stretch your hands towards them, church. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, let the anointing rest upon them. Let the glory of God rest upon them. Let their finances have no lack. I break the curse that the enemy has placed upon them. In Jesus' mighty name, I break the curse of financial luck. I break the curse. When it comes to having no jobs, when it comes to the lack of favor upon their lives, may favor come upon them. May they be located from this moment. May this not only be finances, that is given to them tonight. But may it be an anointing that breaks the back of the enemy in Jesus' mighty name. Okay, come stand here. Hey? Okay. Okay, there you go. Bless you. Just keep staying here in front. those that are online as you are giving just notify us that you have given and that you are giving that we can just take note of that
Come on, let's give Jesus a praise offering, church. Bless you, bless you guys. Let's go, as you keep standing, let's go through to our campuses. We're going through to Krugersdorp, we're going through to, uh, to Cape Town, I believe it is. Uh, can they hear us? How does it work? Who's talking to me? You, David. Okay, so let me know somebody. Everybody's just staring at me. Let me see. I want to see if Krugersdorp can hear me. I want to see if Cape Town can hear me. Um, okay. Those who are online, we have a lot of people online right now. So now we have about, we have far over 3,000 people right now um, in total in our campuses, probably a bit more. I mean, with the, with the online crowd. Raise your hands wherever you are, in Cape Town, in Krugersdorp, in Cape Town, hear us? Raise your hands, raise your hands, raise your hands. Cape Town, raise your hands to the Lord. Cape Town can't hear me, they ain't raising hands. So don't just assume and tell me, they, they, are they responding? Cape Town isn't raising hands, look at Cape Town. Huh? They delayed. They are delayed. Okay. They are delayed. I don't know why they delayed, but uh, it's okay. Raise your hands to the Lord. Raise your hands to the Lord. Raise your hands to the Lord. Say with me. Say, Heavenly Father. Say, Holy Ghost. I surrender my life. I receive right now. By the Spirit of God, I receive by the prophetic unction in Jesus' mighty name. I heard the Spirit of the Lord saying to me this. I want Cape Town to listen. I want Kruger's Dorp to listen. I want Centurion to listen. I want those who are watching us online to listen to this word. That when it comes to the church in South Africa, the Lord said to me, there will be gatekeepers that will be fighting and that the enemy has a strategy to try to attack gatekeepers in the body of Christ, to bring an embarrassment. But I need you to pray, says the Spirit of the Lord, for the church in this nation. Because the enemy has a plan to attack gatekeepers to bring an embarrassment and shame and to bring an exposure, especially when it comes in the area of marriage, when it comes in the area of scandals. For the enemy wants to bring a shame to the body of keeping the body of Christ naked upon the cross. But I will raise Joseph of Arimathea, says the Lord that will have a craving to clothe my body. But the Lord is saying, pray for the church in this nation because the resistance and the clash amongst gatekeepers and between the old and the new is not pleasing in the sight of the Lord and in the heart of the Lord. For the Lord is saying, I am weeping over the church in this nation. That, O oh, Jerusalem, as I have wept over you, so my church have not recognized the hour of her visitation and have not vis recognized the hour and discerned and perceived the hour of her visitation. But the Lord is saying, I'm raising up a prayer movement where many will begin to pray. For the Lord said to me, the church in Cape Town has to pray because I saw angels being sent to that city for something 
that requires protection. And I saw angels being released to the city of Cape Town due to an event that is going to strike that city and that is going to bring danger to the lives of people. But the Lord is saying, by the prayers of my saints, I will strengthen the angelic hosts. For the Lord is saying, did I not say to you that another general will pass before the year ends? And I said, it will be a graduation and not an embarrassment. And so it has been fulfilled that a giant has stepped over in this nation into the realms of glory. And I saw the one that is left behind, that a perplexity and a pressure came. But the Spirit of the Lord is saying, my hand will come upon that one. And I'll cause even a prayer movement to come there. And I'll give that one a strengthening in the realm of the Spirit. And I'll give that one strategies for church planting in a greater dimension that they could have ever seen it before. For the Lord is saying, even as this word go forth, that one will know exactly who I'm speaking to you about. For I will send my angels and I have sent my angels to you to strengthen you. And to have strategies for church planting, says the Lord. For I see you touching Cape Town and I see you touching Africa. For the Lord is saying, even a work in Cape Town that is going to begin. And I'll extend it to Cape Town, I'll extend to Africa. And the Lord showed me a dot, an extension to Europe, says the Spirit of the Lord. For again, I'm saying there's a shifting of gates that is taking place in the church in this nation. A shifting of gates, a battling of gates, a transition that is taking place. It has been painful, but I had a vision of a, of a woman giving birth. And the Lord said to me, that there is a birth pangs that is beginning to take place. But the promise shall come. And though it has been painful, the delivery is at hand, says the Lord. For the Lord said with me that I have not forgotten my servants in this nation. And I will remember my servants in South Africa. For when one more servant when one more anointed graduates, says the Lord, this one I will reveal to you closer to the time. Then you will see an explosion of my rhema word, says this with the Lord coming to this nation. And this will be a sign to you that God is going to begin to establish again mega churches because there has been a limiter upon churches and there has been a cap and a lid upon churches. But the Lord is saying, as this one graduates, it shall not be a time of mourning, it shall be a time of celebration. And my rhema world, word will spread. For I looked and I saw the number 1717 floating in this event and I saw that there will be a movement of repentance that will begin to break out over this nation of South Africa. And many souls for this year will even be marked as the year of souls, says the Spirit of the Lord. It's not the year of souls, but it's the year of souls. For great harvest will come in. For I will send my evangelists. For the Lord is saying the time is near, the time is short, but the harvest is ripe. And the church will be awakened to the value of the prophetic. For the Lord says, where is the time that the church stood against racism? And why have you gone silent, O church? Because the enemy has planned for a spirit of racism to rise in this nation and rear its head in a manner that we have not seen yet in a few years. And it is there to divide and it is there to bring chaos and reawaken pain. For the Lord is saying, where's the church that has stood against racism? And then the Lord showed me that I have anointed my servant, says the Lord. And there's a servant that I'm raising up for a time such as this. He already has a voice in politics. And he has a great voice in the church. And this 
leaning over and standing with two legs where I will put my oil upon him for favor to speak with a greater dimension. For the Lord is saying this year, I will take my servant into a higher dimension. But where the enemy has tried to bring shame and to bring pain and to bring discouragement and to taunt, I will now clothe him with new garments like Joshua was standing in front of the high priest and the enemy tried to accuse the Lord is saying, I'm clothing you with a new garment and I shall elevate your voice, says the Spirit of God. For there will be an attack against this one's life this year that is coming. And the church has to pray and has to pray. When I looked at 2023, I hear the words pray, pray, pray for the church in South Africa. For there will be attack against this life, which you must pray against. And I looked, and the enemy wants to bring scandalous news, but my grace will prevail. And I will expose what is a lie, says the Lord. For the enemy has tried to taunt this one. But the Lord is saying there is a lie that is going around. And you will see me vindicate. And this one will become a voice of unity. Will bring a camaraderie of the church back. And will deal with division. Because of my anointing that is coming upon him. And he will break racial barriers. And political barriers. For there will be a replacement when it comes. To the politics and the Christian politics, says the Lord. For see, I am doing a new thing. For I say again that there will be a fight amongst gatekeepers. The old will be resisting and fighting. And the new will be rejected. But a time will come such as this, says the Lord. Where the young and the old will worship me together. For a time shall come, says the Lord where there will be a surrender. And this is where my servants and where the brethren dwell in unity. There I will command my blessing. And the blessing has been held from this land, says the Lord, because of the disunity and the division in the church. But see now how I will cause a shaking to come. And the mountain of the Lord, the kingdom of God, shall be on top of every other mountain, on every other kingdom. For there will be a great move in this nation and other nations when it comes to women of God, says the Lord. For I will crown women for the next move. And I will place my anointing upon women for the next move. For the Lord is saying, you'll see apostolic women rise up. You'll see prophetic women rise up. For they have been withheld and they've been pulled down. And the feministic move in the secular world has tried to, as much as what it looks like, they want to elevate the voice of women. It is degrading the nature of women. And the Lord is saying, I'll put my spirit upon Deborah's. I'll put my spirit upon Annas. I'll put my spirit upon Hannah's. And as Hannah struggled and her womb was shut up. So the Lord is saying that I will open up the womb when it comes to the church in South Africa. And the church in South Africa will be remembered. And servants in South Africa will be remembered. But when it comes to the nation of South Africa as a whole, the Lord is saying, my heart is broken for you, South Africa, for the idolatry that you have created and the reaping of the sins of your forefathers you are reaping, and you're experiencing bowels of judgment. But I am looking for a righteous remnant that I will preserve, says the Lord. For my mercies are new every morning, and if I can find but a few righteous, if I can find a few righteous, I will bring a confusion in the camp of the enemy. For the Lord is saying, many will scream in this time 
when racism wants to come up, they'll scream and they say a nation is forgotten and a nation is lost. But they'll forget about the abominations that has been committed. For the Lord is saying, but my righteous, I set my face for them and against the enemy. For this nation needs prayer. And I'm saying this for those who can hear it out there. That prayer movements is going to be raised up. And the Lord is saying the church that prays is the church that will have power. For it will be so serious you can either choose death or prayer. For there will be a rise of racial and racism onslaughts. I saw strikes, I saw fires and I saw touching coastlands. And I saw again angels going forth and being sent to Cape Town for a certain reason. And the Lord is saying, I will be with the city of Cape Town. The Lord is saying, pray for the city of Durban because the, uh, the roots connected to the leadership of this nation has caused the courts of heaven to pronounce judgment. And you will see that things will begin to look like it is it is worsening, but it is me that is moving, says the Lord. Do not think all is good when they shout peace from the rooftops. For you will see, when it comes to politics, how many will turn against one another. But what people have hoped for is yet not going to happen yet. Because there are bowls of judgment that has to be filled. And they are not yet full. But I looked at the church in this nation of South Africa. And the Lord said to me, I'm raising up a specific branch, a patriotic type church. That is going to have a move. And that is going to affect politics. That is going to cause righteousness to come into politics. And then... When the church's voice is on the news and the media, you shall see a shift beginning to take place. When it comes to the global church, the Lord said to me, you shall see a strange move where ministers will travel less, but many will travel to ministers. For I will cause centers to be planted, says the Lord, where many will come to. For even when I look at prophets, when I look at apostles, when in the, Old, in the New Testament they traveled, the Lord is saying, now many will come to them and many will travel to them. For you'll see many that will open, that will come to the nation of South Africa and a cap will be lifted off from this nation. For the global church, the Lord is saying, when it comes to the movement and the revival of deliverance, needs to be careful that revival doesn't turn into religion and a movement doesn't turn into a monument and a movement doesn't turn into methods. For the Lord is saying, I will cause prophets to rise up for there not to be a monotony or a monotonous to come into a revival that is currently happening. For the Lord is saying, prophets will begin to purify again. For the church as a whole, I say again, gatekeepers is going to fight. For the Lord is saying, keep your eyes upon New York. Keep your eyes upon the UK. Pray when it comes to the United States, and we have a lot in the United States watching right now. Pray for Dos Santos. For the Lord is saying the enemy has planned a gruesome scandal. For keep your prayers on him. And the Lord said to me, when it comes to nations, the South is safe. Even when it comes to continents, the South is the safest. For do not underestimate the South. And be warned when it comes to the North. For when it comes to the UK, pray. When it comes to New York, pray. When it comes to the UK, I heard a song singing in my ears. When the Lord showed me the nation, the country, the United Kingdoms. And I heard the song like Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. For all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty back together again. And I heard the UK. And the Lord said, pray for that nation. For what the enemy wants to do according to finances. For pray for the United States when it comes to finances. 
when you when you will open your eyes again the dollar will be so low for the Lord says pray for the United States when I see because I see an attack that is coming there will be rumors of war but do not believe every rumor but keep your eyes on New York and pray against an attack when it comes to warnings for the body of Christ, I heard the Lord say to me, be careful of famine. Watch for any infection that might come through food. For I will give my people wisdom, says the Lord. Raise your hands, raise your hands, raise your hands. For as a famine is on the horizon, the Lord is saying, I will put my people in a land of Goshen. For those who are connected to this ministry and connected to the prophetic anointing, the Lord is saying, see that I will not prosper you. For this year I have crowned it as the year of Goshen, says the Spirit of God. And I want to say this before we go into the countdown in Cape Town and Krugersdorp, that the ground of encounter is anointed. And the Lord said to me that oil will be poured upon the ground to make it holy ground. And as you enter in, 10, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Say Koshen. Say it again, say Goshen. Say, I am in Goshen. Give me oil. Stretch out your hands, stretch out your hands, stretch out your hands, stretch out your hands. For this is what the Lord showed me. For those who are watching online, for those who are watching, from whatever nation you are from, those who are connected to this voice right now, those who are connected to this prophetic voice, I speak, I prophesy that your head will lack no oil, says the Lord. Your business will lack no oil. This nation will lack, for the Lord is saying, I will bring the anointing back to this nation. I will bring the anointing back to this church. I will bring the anointing back to churches that have gone sick and sensitive. You will see revival being poured out upon the pulpits of this nation. You will see me changing the hearts of ministers. And I will silence the voice of the accuser, the voice of slander against the church of the living God. For the Lord is saying, I will raise up prophets. I will raise up apostles. I will raise up evangelists. For right now, the year of 2023, crowned as the year of Goshen, I will anoint the heads of those who are watching. I will anoint the heads of those who are in this place. Angels will go before you. Angels will go behind you. I speak prosperity over your business. I strike down the serpent in the city of Krugersdorp that has tried to take lives and take souls, that has lied to the people of God. Every spirit of false doctrines, every doctrine of day, demons of doctrine, every seducing spirit in the nation of South Africa, every spirit of false prophecy, every spirit of divination, you shall see the hand of the Lord arise. The Lord said to me, look to the sky and you will see the size, a cloud the size of a man's hand. For when you begin to see that, you will know that the rains are coming. For I've promised you every year when we enter in with rains in the natural. For you shall see rains in the Spirit, says the Lord. But 
the Spirit of the Lord, the angelic presence, the prophetic unction will not depart from this house. And those who have sowed into this anointing, those who have given to this anointing, for the Lord said to me, you're standing on holy ground. And He said to me, as you pour oil upon this ground, you will see my anointing strike the businesses, strike individuals, that I'll anoint the heads of those who are connected to the stream, who are in this place. And their heads will lack no oil, their horn will lack no strength. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sing the song, go shame. Raise your 
hands, raise your hands, raise your hands to the Lord. Just as you raise your hands, there's this family standing here. Uh, you say, yes, you. Do you. Can you and your family come here? Or if you have your family with you, just raise your hands to the Lord. I saw the hand of God on you. Raise your hands. For the Lord spoke to me to simply tell you this. You will see my angels enter into your house. I look at business and I saw the finger of the Lord touching businesses business and the Lord said to me you will see the hand the finger of God changing situations you'll see your children and your family serving God for before you many years before you there was people who prayed and your family who prayed I saw generations before you and I saw a call of God that was supposed to be for them to enter. And I saw this generational call, the mantles, that is not coming to fulfillment for them. And now I seal this thing in the Spirit. I place and impart an anointing in you for the Lord is saying, be careful of too many voices. Be careful of too many voices of confusion. Even if they seem right or they sound right, watch out for too many voices. Because there's a precious price. For the angel of the Lord showed me how death will be averted in this family. An attack that the enemy is trying to bring will be averted and will be stopped. And I prophesy in the name of the Lord, if I be a prophet, whatever the enemy has planned, I forbid it in the name of Jesus Christ. For the Lord showed me His finger coming into your family like a, the thunder, the lightning of God. And see how the anointing and the fire of God will cause doors to open, mantles to rest, because temptation is going to come. Tests and temptations is coming. The attack that the enemy wants to bring against a physical body, I declare it null and void. I speak the blessing of God over you. May the fire of the Holy Ghost rest upon you. The mantles that I saw, may it come into fruition. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, let's give Jesus a praise. Come here for me.
Just stand there, that's fine. Just stand there. Do you have sons? Do you have like two sons or, or how many sons? How many children? What? Sorry? Oh, blended. Okay. Four sons. Where is it? Two from your side. So six. Oh, six children. Oh. So sons, daughters, well, but from your side? Two sons from your side. Like I said, I keep saying two sons. There's anointing upon your family. The enemy has tried to resist and try to come against an attack that the enemy wants to bring. But God is going to use children. But I looked and the Lord showed me as you were standing there to speak and break the curse that the enemy wants to put on this family, has placed upon this family. Every curse. For the enemy has tried to attack you because of the call of intercession and a prayer warrior that is on you. Because of how you prayed. Is there parts that you can't move with the body now? Like, like is it uh, how long ago? Uh, just a month back. Okay. For the Lord is saying, as the enemy tried to shut your mouth, that there's an anointing for prayer upon you. They say prayer water that is locked up in you because of prayers. Because I saw this family giving to the Lord a lot, like sowing and praying. And the Lord said to me that this attack and this curse to break it over them in Jesus' mighty name. Death will not come before its time. And years will not be taken before its time, says the Lord. For I rebuke the spirit of fear. I rebuke the sickness in the blood. In Jesus' mighty name. Every disease, every infection, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. I command her to be healed, the pain to depart, and every faculty of a body that is not moving, that is not operating, every cell, every fiber to begin to be renewed, to be made alive. Holy Ghost, breathe upon it. Set her free right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Set her free. Every spirit that haunted her, every spirit that came after her, I rebuke it and I command it to leave her body in the name of Jesus Christ. The lack and attack of finances upon this family, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus Christ. May you anoint a mouth. May your voice be opened. May your voice be heard in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray and I anoint your hands. Where the enemy wanted to attack the finances. Where family members spoke against. And try to bring a, bring a great attack against this family. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. 
set this family free. And even as they leave this place, may the blessing of a prophet rest upon their lives. In Jesus' name. For a famine to touch you. May it be your year of my Goshen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. To this ministry, we have made giving your tithes, seed, or offering as simple and effortless as possible. You can simply log on to encounterchurch.co.za or leondupria.com and click on the Give button. Here we show you the different ways to give. It's so easy. You will find giving options for local or international giving. PayFast is a fast and secure way for South Africans to give. You can give once off or make a recurring donation. Here you will find the Zapper and SnapScan QR codes as a simple and effortless way to scan and give into the ministry. If you prefer to make an electronic transfer, the banking details of our various campuses and the Visionary Fund are also readily available. For 
for giving internationally, Cash App is one of our fast and simple giving platforms. PayPal is another method for quick and easy giving internationally. You can use your PayPal account or you can give straight from your credit card. DonorBox is also available, which accepts a variety of international giving methods. For those who would like to take hands with us and become a part of the incredible work that God is doing, become a friend and partner of Encounter and Leon Dupria. We have many partnership tiers available to suit your preference. Our friends and partners receive exclusive materials from Leon Dupria, as well as private live streams and exclusive events. Thank you for being part of what God is doing. Thank you.